Here is the value plan for the painting we're going to do today. You can see the photograph. The photograph is very monochromatic and a lot of the values uh, above the horizon line, below the horizon line are the same. The value range has been restricted. I have redrawn it. It's slightly lighter in these areas than in the photograph. My darks are not quite as dark. These darks are a little heavy and a little dead. This is an early morning, very moody time of day. Actually on my way to gym in the morning um, to do my morning workout. And all I did was stick the camera into the front of the car and take a quick picture and onto the gym. It's not the best of reference photographs, hence my redrawing it in this sketchbook. And notice that I decided to focus in on the focal area, which is the blinking um, yellow light at the intersection. I went to a square format. And I put my focal area, where this little red dot is, in the upper right quadrant. I then assigned a value to all of the rest of the shapes. To create mood, often what I'll do is restrict the value range. So here's our value scale again. If I want to create a lot of power and drama, I'll use the whole value scale. If I want to create mood, I'll often restrict the value scale. So we're going to drop out white, the lightest light, and black, the darkest dark. And our value scale is going to include more of the midtones from here to here in terms of the value range. So you'll notice, I'd like to stop just momentarily and point this out, that the value is pretty close to the same, maybe a little darker here, a little lighter here, but basically a mid-tone. These areas were mostly blue, more blue here, a little bit of violet here. Here, I grabbed quite a bit of the permanent rose so that my blue kicked towards blue-violet, but all still within the same value. Why do that? Variety. A little variety in both the tone and temperature for the viewer. Remember, you're the entertainer. So I'm moving some of that color all around. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, there's a little bit here. Notice that the paint builds up right here in the heel of my brush and right here in the heel of my brush. And I use that paint. So as I'm painting along, I'll take the heel of my brush and rub it, and that deposits that paint that's built up on my panel, and then I can use that paint. So the road comes at us, but to show the contour of the road, I'm using slightly darker, not a lot, slightly darker paint to show that this road, in fact, has a contour across the surface this way. Ah, we're to an edge. So let's paint the edge as well. This shape continues right over the edge. And this does a couple of things. Number one, if you paint the edge all the way around and you want to display your painting without a frame, it's perfectly acceptable to do that. And I know lots of artists who go ahead and put a wire on the back, sign the painting, and display acrylic paintings without a frame. They look very contemporary. Also, if you'd like to float frame so that the edges show just a little bit with a frame on the outside of that, it makes the painting look completely finished. So either way, framing works perfectly or unframed is perfectly acceptable. I like a larger brush. I 
generally use the largest brush I can for any given area. It prevents me from being overly picky or getting into the details prematurely. It's usually not about the details, it's about the large shapes. Adding that permanent rose neutralizes that green. And we're going to take this green and quite a bit of permanent rose. So now, instead of a neutralized green, we have a neutralized violet. The periphery is a little farther back. And this will be a lighter value, more neutralized. Let's even add just a little bit of white to that. There we go. Which will essentially push that visually farther back. Let me twirl my brush again to get more of that paint to come off. And just enough of a suggestion to the viewer that this is, in fact, a conifer tree, a pine tree. Don't overdo the, the detail. Most people understand that a tree is a tree and the kind of tree based on the silhouette, the shape of the tree. Mm -hmm.